Space technology began with bold thinking. Chinese civilization is full of dreams of takeoff. All gods and nymphs fly, and mythology at last inspired a man into trying. He might not have realized what epoch-making attempt he was taking. A man named Wan Hu in the 14th century is said to be the first man to try flight by rocket. American rocket expert Herbert Zim described Wan Hu's experiment in his Rocket and Jet Engine of 1945. Wan Hu's attempt is worth mentioning. If record is correct, this Chinese gentleman and scholar who lived almost into the 15th century is the first man to try a flight by rocket. First, he made two huge kites which were put side by side. Then, on the framework between the kites, he fastened a chair and 47 rockets that were the biggest ones he could find. When everything was ready, one who seated himself in the chair and bid his servants, who held torches ready in their hands, ignite all the rockets. There came a thunder-like noise, followed by big fire, and this experimentalist disappeared forever in the fire and smoke. His experiment was primitive, and his attempted flight with kites and chair was a violation of aerodynamics. It is therefore not surprising that he failed. But his ingenious launch antedated by centuries the hypothesis of star travel by rocket proposed by Russian scientist K. E. Tsiolkovsky, father of astronautics. Six centuries later. One whose failure is considered by international astronautic historians as man's first attempt of takeoff by rocket. After Zim's account in Rocket and Jet Engine, one whose story attracted the attention of rocket scientists in the West. American artist McDonald made illustrations of one whose experiment based on Zim's description. Rocket experts in the former Soviet Union wrote that Chinese not only invented rockets. But they made the first attempt of sending man into the sky with solid-engine rockets. One who failed. Five hundred years later, however. Both the Soviet Union, Britain, and the United States recognized him as a hero in the history of rocket science. By contrast, his name was not mentioned in Chinese official history. Some people say this is because he failed. Man had been going with incorrect conceptions of the universe until Copernican revolution opened the right way 500 years ago. In the 20th century, human beings expanded their territory to a three-dimensional world. From lands and oceans to the sky and outer space, that is a great leap forward achieved in the last few decades, a greatest one in man's millions of years of history on the Earth. This has also led to great revolutions in our capability of knowing the world and adapting it to our life. Flight is a milestone in these revolutions. Man has long been dreaming for space travel. Americans opened a moon garden in 1903. Visitors paid 50 cents and got on board a winged vehicle in the shape of a cigar. After a while of bumping and shaking, they supposedly landed on the moon. In the same year, Wright brothers made into the sky. And remain their flight for 59 seconds. This is the world's first controlled powered human flight with a vehicle heavier than the air. They made it for 260 meters. That is the world's first airplane. After the Arabians introduced primitive Chinese rocket technology to Europe, pioneers in astronautics. Inspired by reaction effect of rocket, began thinking of using jet as the power system for space travel. When the 20th century began, two men found a better use for rocket: atmospheric monitoring and space exploration. 
The two men are Tsiolkovsky from Russia and Goddard from the United States. Konstantin Edwardovich Tsiolkovsky was born in 1857 in Ryazan Province, Russia. On his eighth birthday, Konstantin received his presents from his mother. They were Jules Verne's From Earth to Moon and a hydrogen balloon. Konstantin liked them very much. The novel, which he read again and again, inspired him to space travel. So when children of his age spent their time playing on the ground, he had his mind soaring up to the sky. At the age of 16, Tsiolkovsky finished most of the high school curricula by self-education. Then he came to Moscow alone for further learning. In Moscow, he lived three years in constant half-starvation. Poverty did harm to Tsiolkovsky's health. Thus, he wrote later, My stomach was filled with black bread, and my mind with dreams and ambitious plans. After extensive reading, he began pondering on the possibility of flight. He gave his mind to questions of how to make a metal balloon that could stay in the air and how to make steel higher into the outer space so that Jules Verne's fancy would come true. In 1883, he published his first science fiction, On the Moon. He did it only as his hobby. In his novel, he put forward his bold idea of sending man-made satellite into outer space and described with a sense of certainty humans landing on the moon. Tsiolkovsky is the first man to suggest making use of reaction in space travel. In the meanwhile, in the Far East, Chinese Empire was outliving her prime time and going helplessly to the fall. Frustrations in wars against invasion sent the people desperate for national renaissance. Revolutionary mentality seized the nation. As the Tsar of Russia was busy thinking of how he could extract the most possible interest from his weakening neighbor, Tsiolkovsky finished his second science fiction book, Dreams of the Earth and Sky, The Effect of Gravity.在牛顿的时代，它已经提出了，就是要想这个呃火箭达到，而且围绕地球飞行变成一颗卫星，那不掉在地球上来，就是上去以后不掉下来。那么这个速度呢，一定达到就是每秒七点九公里这样大的速度
，他的理论上是做了很多工作，所以我们就把他作为是宇宇航先驱者，是吧？宇航理论的奠基人。